ントが死んでたの二人仲良く首くくって私はあんなの嫌私絶対あんな風にならない In 1999, author Koshin Takami released a dystopian horror book titled Battle Royale. The book's premise was that of a totalitarian Japanese government making its citizens commit atrocities against one another in the name of keeping law and order amid an economic collapse. In 2001, Takami's book was adapted into a live action movie directed by Kinji Fukusaku with the help from his son, Kenta Fukusaku, who wrote the screenplay. Both the book and the film stirred up huge controversies upon release. It's not just that the film featured violent content, it featured teenagers committing atrocities upon each other, which was kind of rare up until that point. Battle Royale sits at 7.6 out of 10 on IMDb, 79 out of 100 on Metacritic, and 89% out of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes. Created on a budget of just $5 million, the movie will go on to gross about $30 million worldwide. It has developed a cult following and even decades later has influenced very successful franchises such as PlayerUnknown Battlegrounds, Gantz, Fortnite, and Hunger Games, who all put their own spin on essentially what is a giant deathmatch until the last person remains. I guess I should begin with how I initially came across this movie. Basically, my interest in the Battle Royale game genre is what led me to discover the Battle Royale movie. The pacing of the movie is not so bad. Uh, I would say that out of all the things that could have been explored, there was a little bit too much emphasis on fucking basketball game flashbacks. There, it's at least like, Jesus. I want to say there's at least 10 minutes of basketball flashbacks in this movie. Considering all the things they could have explored and touched on in this movie, I feel maybe the overabundance of basketball flashbacks hurt the pacing a little bit because there's just so many other things they could have explored and explained or touched upon, etc. But the pacing of the movie, it's really, it's not so bad. Regardless of what I think of this movie, the acting in Battle Royale was fantastic. The actors in this movie killed it. Like, I believe that they were actually high school students caught in this horrific situation trying to make the best out of it. There are definitely some, like I said, there are definitely some issues with the movie, no doubt. Or at least there are definitely some issues I have with the movie. But as far as the actors in this movie and the actresses, they killed their roles. Yeah, there, were, there weren't any actors that stood out particularly. It was more just like a mass of good actors. I actually hope that doesn't come across like it sounds. They were all good actors. There were just no, there were no standouts in my opinion. One of my favorite parts of the movie is when the, when the viewer finds out that they can like and subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter to find out when I stream some video games. <laughs> and following the great acting that was displayed in this movie, the dialogue was actually pretty good too. You know, barring like the basketball flashbacks and shit like that. But yeah, the dialogue didn't really strike me as out of place or unbelievable or out of context. Like what the actors were actually saying to back up their roles it was totally fine. It was totally serviceable. And then some parts pretty good. Doing research into this movie and what the director and his son meant to convey via like some kind of uh, bigger message, there's a lot to actually dig into. I watched this movie three times and during each of those times, I didn't really pick upon uh, any kind of larger message or societal issues that the movie was trying to critique. I feel that might have to do with maybe the cultural difference, you know, be me being an American looking at a Japanese movie. And one of the bigger issues I had with the movie is how campy and cheesy it came across. To me, that someone who was watching the movie, I didn't really go in with a bias other than, hey, this kind of spawned the battle royale video game genre. That was the only bias I was going in with. So when I was watching the movie and encountering a lot of cheesy things, a lot of campy situations, it, if there was messaging to be gleaned from an ignorant viewer such as myself, that stuff more or less got in the way. It didn't really feel like the movie was trying to deliver upon a social message as much as it was trying to deliver upon like, hey, what would these high school students do in this horrific situation? So it's only by researching the movie after I watched it that I discovered that there was all the societal messaging, which completely flew over my head when I first viewed it. So the world building in this movie, it's kind of like, uh, if you just focus on the battle royale game itself, when the students are on this island, okay, there's some there's some good world building going on there. But if you pay attention to the bits of world building presented at the beginning of the movie, the battle royale game was started essentially to be a deterrent for truancy. Like, 
listen, even if you're dealing with the premise of this corrupt totalitarian Japanese government, like they're gonna do some fucked up shit, I get it. And governments around the world are far from like machines of efficiency. I totally get that too. But it seems really, really strange that the battle royale and all resources it takes to make the battle royale game a thing seems very strange that it would be enacted mostly as a deterrent for truancy and then on top of that if it was a deterrent for truancy why would they pick students that are actively attending school my problem with the world building in battle royale is it establishes that there's an economic collapse going on slash societal collapse okay that's fine right and a lot of people are jobless and a lot of kids aren't going to school anymore and you know they're out wandering the streets getting into trouble i totally get that too why not have the battle royale participants selected from among that group of people that's out causing trouble and not so much the students in school like there's actually one part of the movie where there's uh there's some there's some student and he's caught in some tense situation and he starts like reciting some kind of like fucking math equation <laughs> That doesn't really strike me as one of the people that are out causing trouble and therefore needs to be like randomly selected to like teach people a lesson. The beginning of the movie does establish that one of the winners of the past battle royales receive a lot of press attention, etc. It seems like a missed opportunity that there weren't like cameras on this island to actually capture what was going on in this game. Because as far as we're led to believe as an audience, the students are put on this island, you know, they fight it out however they're gonna fight it out. And then the winner receives the press coverage. That press coverage is, I guess that's meant to convey like, how terrible and atrocious this battle royale event is so you better stay in school it seems like a missed opportunity to not have these students being recorded live and people watching this live and be like hey i don't want to end up on that show so i better fucking go to school like i said the world building's kind of like iffy i would say probably average viewers not going to really care about that and definitely didn't stop this movie from becoming the success it has, but I did find a problem with the world of building. It was kind of weak sometimes. I want to say this without getting into spoiler territory. Even though Battle Royale has been going on for at least a few years, the runners, the people who run this game, they leave things on the islands that can actually compromise the game itself against the people running it. And I found that as like, kind of, it's kind of akin like if you lock someone in a cell, and you know you close the doors slam the bar shut on him but you leave a key to get out of the cell in the cell that's the most i can say without spoiling the movie so do i recommend this movie personally yes now here here's my bias let me admit to my bias like i said i found out about this movie by trying to get to the bottom of what inspired the battle royale gaming genre my interest was already peaked beforehand but that doesn't stop what i feel the average viewer would be from enjoying this movie but here are some caveats one <laughs> you got to be okay with some cheesiness and campiness right there, there's a phrase that used to pop around among my friend group like the movie was so bad it's awesome or so bad it's good like it's so bad it comes out the other side and it's just kind of like entertaining the movie isn't trying to be bad awesome but at least to my ignorant american eyes like there were definitely parts of this movie that were like so bad that they were like it was basically like what the fuck's happening here like what the fuck are you guys doing i just had to sit there in utter bewilderment and i was just like i was amused i was entertained uh, the second thing is if you're watching this if you are interested in actually watching this movie you have to either be okay with um subtitles or you have to be okay with dubbing i would personally suggest to watch the subtitled version because unless we're talking about a fantastic dub job which is not the case here i would strongly recommend just watching the subtitled version but overall yeah i would recommend watching this movie if you're a fan of action movies if you're a fan of horror movies if you're a fan of dystopian fiction um if you're a fan of like action and suspense because there are some really good nuggets of pure gold and brilliance in this movie and i recognize what i see as campiness and corniness i can understand that that's just a cultural difference any of that sounds interesting to you i would definitely suggest watching this movie